Hey, a pleasant good day, hockey fans. This is going to be a video on the LA Kings as we do there, rounding out the regular season slash season recap and player analysis report as I'll be doing their playoff preview shortly as well. Where I did do, though, with eMoney, you can check out the Eastern Conference playoff preview and Western Conference playoff previews, where the Western will, of course, have the LA Kings on it, where we gave our percentage chances of teams winning the Cup, and I actually gave the Kings what most of their fans would probably consider and most overall hockey analysts in the media overall uh, nationally would probably consider a decently high chance, but that's because they have good veterans mixed in with very talented youngsters. So let's get into that as well for what made them great this year, indeed, to be able to get into the playoffs. I think the Kings also never even hit their ceiling this year because I don't think they foresaw, even though Sean Dursey played fantastic in 63 games and played a lot higher than I ever thought, think they thought he was going to have to play this year as a former second round pick that they were able to get from the Toronto Maple Leafs organization. Uh, Dursey played great. Matt Roy obviously is a very good right shot defenseman and he played very good. It was a plus 23. Bjorn Foot filled in, had his moments of ups and downs, but he's still developing only 21 years of age, had a heck of a lot of room to grow, but I think he's going to be a good NHL defenseman. Edler's a very great veteran to have. He's basically their goal Lagoski, just a very good steady Eddie veteran. That's a 35-up contract um, that, that that plays really well um, at $3.5 million uh, still as a cap hit, but he deserves that with how good he plays. Mikey Anderson, obviously, is a guy that plays great and is usually with Drew Doughty. The big thing with the Kings is Tom McClellan deserves to get <clears throat> a heck of a lot of votes for the Jack Adams because Todd McClellan really got the most out of this Kings team. They had a lot of injuries. They had Jonathan Quick really have one of his best bounce back seasons late in his career. He's one of my favorite goalies, former Reading Royal as well. Um, Drew Doughty's been injured. Sean Walker was out practically the entire season. He only played six games. Doughty only played 39 games. And they were still able to put that defense together. Morvari played 19. Spence played 23 and played well. Uh, Stretcher was even able to play 28 games for them. Stretcher wasn't the most consistent in those 28 games, but he was able to play 28 games for them. When you had young guys like Spence, Mavari, even Austin Strand in eight games, these guys show they can belong in the NHL, and that's great to see for the Kings' future and also the present. Was going to need them catch as well with all the injuries on their defense. Uh, when it comes to forward core, they obviously had Kapari, Brendan Lemieux, Gabriel Velarde, and Lias Anderson. Uh, Velarde, 24 games, and Landerson, 20, so not as much for them, but Lemieux played almost 50, and Kapari played over 50. So they have a good handful of depth there on their forward core and have mixed in a lot of guys this season. Obviously, Byfield is a guy that can be a dark horse talent to pay attention to going forward in the playoffs. Was solid in the 39 games in the regular season, but still has a lot of room to grow as only a 19-year-old, but he's very talented, and I could definitely foresee him maybe having a hot playoffs to really kickstart his career. Um, and then Arthur Kali have had a very solid season as well and is a very talented kid with a hell of a shot. So two of those guys are definitely guys to watch out for. I'll talk about that more in my player video, but they were very fun guys to watch even rounding out the regular season. They're just obviously not in their primes yet and still have a lot of room to grow, but they definitely look like they belong in the NHL and are going to continue to grow to become very good players. Grundstrom actually found a home, it seems like, in L.A., uh, Alex Iafalo had a career year. Blake Lazat started to turn into a great third-line center, and he's only 24 years of age with room to grow. So obviously that was a very good undrafted uh, kid to obviously get there. <clears throat> and um, he's been doing great things. The no is obviously a fantastic defender, a perfect playoff player to have. Lazat also is very good on the defensive end. He's a perfect playoff player to have. Byfield's a huge guy that can box guys out. Grunstrom's the same way. Kaliev's obviously more of a shot guy, same with Victor Robertson, but this team has a good mix that I think is what made them able to balance it out. They have a good mix of skill and a good mix of pounding that's able to just box guys out. Talent, even Dustin Brown at this point of his career is still a good boxer out. Or hats off to him on the hell of a career. Going to do a video on that as well because he's one of my favorite players that I got to watch. Um, my lifetime is I'm only 25, so I got to watch obviously the entirety of his career and pay attention to it from afar, but uh, he, he was a hell of a player that I'll get to do a video on soon that his career started all the way back in 03, 04 and carried all the way up to now, so obviously you got to be a hell of a player to carry your career that long, so hats off to him. Trevor Moore had a career year as well, so that goes to speak with great coaching, great system. Tom McClellan, one of the more underrated coaches in hockey, deserves all the praise, getting the most out of this team, but all these young guys in Anderson, Dursey, 
even Kupari, who was able to play pretty solid in the games he's put in. Brennan Lemieux, who brings that punch literally in all the games you put him in, and that's a good thing to have in the playoffs. So definitely like that in Lemieux for the playoffs for them. Movari played well. Spence, like I said, even Austin Strain in limited action. So you were able to have all these guys come in and just fit in like a glove and do perfectly uh, for Todd McClellan and come in and fill in for them. Ante Tosillo's continued to fill his role nicely with Lazada and I follow. I think this team has line depth as well, which really helped in the first through third line. And even fourth line has a lot more skill than most people's fourth lines. They just don't have that pop-off-the-charts name brand team with a lot of those pop-off-the-charts names other than the Anzi Kopitars of the world. And when for the people that know the young developing prospect stars, the Quentin Byfields of the world. But for others, they might only really know the Anzi Kopitars and Drew Daddy and Drew Daddy's out and the Jonathan Quicks of the world. So, but for obviously hardcore hockey fans like myself and a lot of people that for watching these videos, they know of the other guys. But this team, I think, is moving in the right direction. Obviously, they got even more studs uh, developing in the minors. Anderson Dolan still has room to go. Turcott is obviously going to potentially be a good player. Uh, Samuel Fag Fagamo is going to be a good player. Uh, Tikachev is a guy that's going to be interesting to watch because he started doing really good in Russia. What can he do? Give him more time over here. Or kill Thomas, obviously. Tyler Madden, both of those guys are ridiculously smart players. Um, so I think both of them have a chance. Dudas is a small skater, but makes up with it with the endless motor. So it'll be interesting to see what he can do. Uh, well, Landon also filled in. Got to claim him off waivers. He filled in fine. Andre Lee is a big boy. That's going to be interesting to watch because he can really knock guys off the puck. Kind of that old school um, mixer guy that uh, is a def is a defender but also has played some offense I offensive positions as well in his career so he can kind of be that swing man but it'll be interesting to see they also have Connor Ingram's brother Matt Vallotta in that David Horenic as well and then Lucas Parrick who is the biggest prospect as well with Vallotta of, of those two so it'll be interesting to see how both of them continue to develop as well as Yuho Markkanen uh, out of Canada, who they drafted in 2020. So they got some good goalies coming up the pipes. Obviously, I also think Pedersen's a good goalie. Um, so um, Chromiak's also there as well. Uh, Soda Grand, Helge Grans, Brant Clark. So this team's continuing to build with great drafting and having great guys budding for the future, as well as already having a team that's ahead of their rebuild because now they're a playoff team, so they're not even in a rebuild anymore. And well ahead of, I think, where a lot of people put them. And the Kings, hats off to them on the hell of a season. I honestly gave them, in the video, you can see it. Uh, check out that video. You can see the percentage chance. I'll link it in this for the Western Conference with E-Money that I gave them for percentages. But <clears throat> I'll let you know it's probably a surprise because it's in the teens the chance I gave them to go <clears throat> all the way because I believe that highly of these veterans mixed in with this freakishly silky Mitch talent that this team has, mixed in with the jam players that they have of even the Anzi Kopitars and Dustin Brown still in this point of their career with the Brendan Lemieux, just to name a few. Obviously, Austin Strand is even a player that could be more valuable in the playoffs just because he's one of those jammer type players. Oli Mata is a more valuable player. Uh, he was good in the regular season, only one of his best regular seasons, but great guy that can knock people off the puck. Uh, Edler, great guy that can knock people off the puck. Matt Roy, great guy that can knock people off the puck. You want for sure to get better at knocking people off the puck, and maybe this players can be his coming out party we'll see. So I think they have a good chance, but I'll talk about that more in my player preview. But this has been the rounding out the season, season recap and player analysis video, where the Kings have a lot to look forward to because um, even if they don't go deep in this playoffs, Anzi Kopitar is still playing at a high level with 66 points in 80 games. Obviously, Kempe had a career year. Alex Ayafalu is continuing to be solid, and I think that's what you got to expect from him at this point. Lozac's turned into a great third liner. That's kind of what Ayafalu is. Antosio is a great third liner, so if you can keep that together, voila. Uh, Carl Grundstrom, Byfield, and Kaliev are just fourth liners for now. Obviously, they're going to move up gradually over time. Arvidsson was a great pickup of 49 points in 66 games for .74 points per game pace. The no even at .65 with being the heck of a defender he is, is great. And then Trevor Moore developing into what he did was a godsend for the Kings and one of the surprise players of the year, the best surprise players, breakout players of the year as well with 48 points in 81 games and has really developed into a guy that utilizes his speed on both ends where before he was no more for when he got drafted I think at being a guy that was good at well actually he never got drafted so I should eat crow on that but when he didn't get drafted but when he got signed as being one of those high effort motor guys that was able to create chances in the offensive zone but realized obviously 
for his sticking weight in the NHL level, not just the AHL level, where he was able to play more effective on both ends right away. He had to figure out a way in the NHL level to be most effective on both ends, and that's happened in Todd McClellan's system, so good for Trevor Moore as well. And I hope the Kings, honestly, they're a team that I will be rooting for, honestly, just because Jonathan Quick's one of my favorite guys. Dustin Brown's one of my favorite players. So they are a team from afar that I will be kind of rooting for in this playoffs. Um, not that I just, I love Leon Dreisler, one of my favorite players as well, who I've compared to a little bit, play style Zanzi Kopitar, but I, I mean, I just want to see this Kings team kind of have a last hurrah, especially because Dustin Brown's in his retiring year. But, um, peace out everybody, stay safe, please subscribe down below, we're up above these views, widget heap is growing to 250 or more by the start of June, really appreciate your love and support this far, this has been the LA Kings season recap slash player analysis video, I'll be doing the playoff preview preview video, excuse me, on the LA Kings soon. Peace out, everybody.